Hello and welcome to a new week of meals. I am jumping right in here with a sort of semi-homemade pizza. Picked up this crust from uh, Winco over the weekend and then we've got some leftover prosciutto. We have some leftover pineapple. Using up leftovers here, mozzarella, leftover marinara sauce from Aldi. We also have some uh, Parmesan cheese just to spice it up a little bit and then some oregano and a little bit of salt. I'm going to start off with Collins pizza. So this is just a cheese pizza because that's exactly what he likes. Super, super plain. This is what the crust looks like before you bake it. So all you need to do is bake it. You don't even need to shape it. It's kind of like a bobbly bread shell. Put the uh, marinara sauce down. I did drizzle a little bit of olive oil to try to give a little bit of color to the crust. Apologies if you can hear my dog in the background. She's drinking water. <laughs> um, as you do with a cheese pizza, just put down some mozzarella as much as you like. And then I'm just adding a little Parmesan cheese just for added flavor. A sprinkle of oregano, again, for a little extra Italian flavor and a tiny bit of salt. And then that's gonna get popped into the oven per the instructions of the package. Then we're gonna move on to Rob's Pizza. Um, again, just putting the crust down on a baking sheet. I am drizzling with olive oil first to give that a little bit of uh, something <laughs> flavor kind of also to loosen the sauce a little bit so now we've got the marinara, marinara sauce down i'm going to spread that around as you do you know assemble your pizza we're going to put a little bit less uh, mozzarella cheese this time on here um again if you like a lot of cheese go for it i just wanted the prosciutto to kind of like shine i guess you could say so we put a little bit of mozzarella cheese and then we're going to put the prosciutto down i have had this prosciutto in the fridge for a while it's still really good you know didn't look weird wasn't like a weird color or anything didn't smell funky um, this is from Aldi so I'm just gonna spread a thin sort of um, not a layer really but I'm just gonna put some prosciutto down and then I'm gonna add some pineapple tidbits that were left over from I believe it was the macaroni salad that I made in my last meals of the week video I believe so this is kind of a play on a Hawaiian pizza, like a ham and pineapple pizza, but I'm using prosciutto instead. So this again is just gonna go into the oven and bake per the instructions of the package. And this is what we have. This is our pizza night. <laughs> the crust was okay. Uh, I don't think I'll buy it again. I would definitely prefer buying a pre-made dough like from Trader Joe's or something like that in the refrigerated section. But this is um, what I served on the side and I actually had a big bowl of the salad. It's just coleslaw mix with sliced beets, ranch dressing, a little bit of a little bit of vinegar, salt and pepper. And yeah, I did try one slice of each just to see what it was like. But yeah, this was our dinner for the evening. Moving on to the next meal, I am browning some ground beef here. We're gonna have sort of like street tacos uh, for this evening served on some corn tortillas. So just starting off here, I'm not gonna use taco seasoning like I normally would. I actually found a recipe which is linked down below and it's sort of a take on that recipe. So I'm gonna link that below and you can follow along so you can see exactly what I'm adding here. Um, the one thing that I thought was unusual was um, in addition to the spices, herbs and spices I'm using here, uh, instead, of like a traditional you know just like salt as a um, something to give it well the saltiness um she used some soy sauce so i thought that was interesting this is what i'm adding here again the recipe will be down below so don't fret you'll get all of the ingredients that i used um that i didn't describe here um but yeah just mixing this through and then i'm going to give it a taste to see if i like it it didn't taste asian at all you know like you think of Asian foods when you think soy sauce, but it gave it a really nice salty flavor without um, an, being like an Asian kind of flared dish. So uh, here is my taste test. Gonna give it a little bit of a taste. I do add even more soy sauce here. It needs a little bit of salt. And then I'm just gonna adjust the seasonings here. going to give that a final stir and once I'm happy with everything I'm going to set it aside on the back burner. In the meantime I'm just going to chop up a few little toppings so I've got a bit of onion and a little bit of lime to squeeze over so I'm just going to prep that and then I will basically move on to the corn tortillas and prep those and then we'll assemble everything for dinner. 
I'm going to do the corn tortillas right on the burners. So I do have a gas stove. Um, if this doesn't work for you, you can put them in the microwave or do something like that to soften them a little bit so they don't crumble as you um, as you put the tacos together. But what I'm looking for is a bit of a char. So I'm going to peak. Um, this is about a medium to low heat. Uh, you you want to go slow so you don't burn your tortillas obviously so I'm just going to do that with the rest of the tortillas I'm going to sort of double layer these you know as you normally find in a restaurant or something like that so they don't fall apart as you eat them so I'm just going to finish those off I am keeping them under wraps in some of in a clean kitchen towel just to keep those warm and then here are, here are the assembled tacos we've got the ground beef mixture inside toppings of cilantro we have some onion um, a squeeze of lime on that if you'd like and then just a side salad uh, this is oil vinegar salt pepper and a bit of that uh, chipotle aioli that I still have in the fridge that I got from Aldi but that was our dinner for the next evening Next up was the dish I was originally going to prepare for my birthday dinner, <laughs> but we ended up going out for dinner, and I am just doing this the next day. So we've got here some zucchini that I'm prepping. I'm basically going to roast. Um, I'm basically going to roast some veggies in the oven, and I'm going to serve it with just some uh, broiled chicken. Actually, that I'm going to cook in the air fryer, so it's going to be sort of like oven baked chicken. Very simple. I just love simple flavors. I like the ingredients just to shine on their own you know that's not to say that I don't love to eat you know a good curry or Asian foods with peppers and spices and very exotic things but you know when I cook I, I like simple you know I like it to be accessible because let's face it I'm a lazy person <laughs> and if I've got like 20 ingredients that I need to put together I'm probably not gonna do it so but then again, that's just me. You cook the way, you know, you do you, all of that. Um, uh, but yeah, so this is what I'm doing here. Very simply, again, I'm just prepping the veggies. I'm going to set them off to the side. I've got some cherry tomatoes there. And moving on to the chicken. So it's just me and Rob tonight. Colin is with friends. So I'm just going to do this very simply chicken thighs, salt and pepper in the air fryer. Um, and this is going to take, you know, a very short amount of time about 20 minutes total I would say it just depends on the size of the chicken um, I'm just again salt and pepper on both sides it's gonna go in I just set it at like 390 I think I believe mine goes up to like 400 but I, I put it down to 390 and then cooked it for about 12 minutes on one side and then I flipped it over and did another six to eight minutes so you just kind of play it by ear depending on the size of your chicken and the way your air fryer is. While the chicken is going, I'm going to make a dipping sauce for Rob um, because I'm not going to use this myself, although I have in the past and it just is so good. Normally I use crushed garlic, but I remembered I had this leftover finely diced onion from the tacos that we did the previous night. So I'm just doing onion, we're going to do soy sauce, I have white wine vinegar and a bit of seasoned rice vinegar. Normally I just do plain old white, but I didn't have any. so. So here it is that's all there is to it the longer it sits the more the flavors like infuse and it just becomes so yummy but again if uh, if you want to go for the original I use crushed garlic here are the sauteed veggies now I'm just or not the sauteed veggies I'm gonna roast these so I'm putting them into my largest skillet here I've got zucchini and yellow squash and then just some cherry tomatoes that I have washed I'm going to drizzle with some olive oil toss this and then put into a high high heat oven I put it at about 400 degrees um, just until they start to soften a bit and then I switch it to broiler and then I stir it around just to get a bit of char on it and that is the veggies done.
go, dinner for two. This is my plate, a couple pieces of the chicken thighs with the roasted veggies there, so good, so delicious and sweet. And I serve mine with mayo, of course. Rob had his with some um, rice and the dipping sauce, and that was our dinner for two. Next up, I am making a low-carb Zuppa Toscana. I'm actually doing this for lunch because the dinner out for my birthday threw the whole weekly menu off. So I'm doing this for lunch. It's a dreary day anyway. It was drizzly and I thought this would be perfect. I'm just cutting off this bit of onion. That I don't know what about the all the onions lately. The insides of some of them are just they're bad. So I tossed it and I am just going to be dicing some onions here. This is a very simple recipe actually, not a whole lot of ingredients. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to continue doing the veg. So we've got onions, we're going to get garlic, I'm going to prep some cauliflower. Um, that's what we're going to use instead of, I think the original Zuppa Toscana calls for potatoes, I'm guessing. Um, but uh, yeah, so I'm going to do cauliflower and that's pretty much it I believe yeah for the veg so very simple ingredients uh, you can do this in a, a matter of minutes just prepping it so that's what I'm doing right here this cauliflower I'm just going to cut up in big chunks first break it up and then I'm going to cut them up in fairly large pieces uh, I, I do like a bit of bite to my veggies so I don't want them to be completely you know just broken up into teeny teeny tiny bits I don't want riced cauliflower let's just say in my soup so here we go large chunks and then I'm just gonna put it into my clear acrylic trays which by the way I'm still loving my cutting board um, just to give you a status report <laughs> an update to let you know I really really love my Holtzy cutting board so link will be down below if you're interested in picking one up for yourself um, a discount also down below if you use my code but here we go um, that is a cauliflower I'm now going to prep my Italian sausage. This is mild Italian sausage that I have. Uh, use your favorite one. Use whatever you can find. I bought the links because they didn't have just the ground meat in the store. So very easy to prep these. You're basically just going to score them and then remove the casing. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm just taking the casings and setting them aside. And then I'll just have the actual sausage meat. I do have the recipe for this one down below and I'm following this one up pretty closely. So um, this is the sausage here ready to go to be browned. I'm going to wash my hands really well because I touched all of that meat there. <laughs> and then this is going to go into my big old pot. And just FYI, I did omit the bacon since I didn't have any. Now I believe the recipe is a copycat from the Olive Garden. Is that where Zuppa Toscana comes from? <laughs> I've never actually had the original. So I'm just going by this particular recipe and it is really good. So again, simple. The flavors really depend on the kind of sausage you use. So depending on what they put in the meat, seasonings, all of that, if they put a lot of fennel or you know other kinds of interesting things in there, it's gonna taste a little bit different from sausage to sausage. So in any case, I've browned the, um, the mild sausage here. I put in the onions. Uh, recipe says to kind of cook that down for a couple minutes until the onions become become translucent. So here they are just slightly softened. They are translucent now. I'm going to add the rest of the veg. So that is the cauliflower along with the chopped up garlic. I'm going to put all of that cauliflower in there and stir it around a little bit. Mm -hmm. 
If you've been with me for a while, or if you've seen any of my other meal videos, you'll know that I just use Knorr chicken flavored bouillon in place of chicken stock or chicken broth. So that's what I'm doing here. Recipe calls for, I believe it's five cups of broth. So I'm doing five teaspoons or so of the bouillon and then some water to go along with that. I'm gonna stir that around. And then I'm going to add some oregano to this, I believe, and then that's just gonna kind of simmer for a bit. Time for the long-awaited first taste test. I'm going to give this a taste just to see uh, if it needs any salt or anything like that. Uh, it does say salt and pepper to taste. I didn't want to add it at the very beginning because um, I, I wanted it to simmer for a bit. And then I'm um, just going to let that sit for a little. I do end up adding additional, uh, additional seasonings here. So I'm going to add actually a little bit of pepper. I'm going to add some salt. I'm going to add some oregano some more oregano but before I do that here is the kale so I've actually turned the heat off now it says to turn it down low I think um, but I'm just going in with some pre-washed pre-chopped kale make sure the bits are you know small enough to eat and then I'm going to stir that around and then I'll add the cream and the additional flavorings or seasonings that I decided to add to the soup Again, you're definitely going to want to taste this uh, just based on the flavors of the sausage. You are going to want to adjust. So here's that salt and pepper. And then I'm going to also add additional chicken flavored bouillon right here. Here is some garlic powder, more oregano. And I think that's it. I think that might, I think that might just be it. <laughs> I'm going to leave the lid on a little bit cracked and just let that cool until we are ready to serve. Got some Parmesan cheese up top here, but that is our low carb Super Toscana, really good. And last meal of the week, we are doing finally some hot dogs. Well, it was supposed to be hot dogs and sausages on the grill, but again, it's been drizzly and just it wasn't grilling weather, so um, we decided to just do hot dogs tonight, make it super easy. Got all the accoutrements here, um, all the toppings that you want, anything you like. <laughs> it's your choice. I served it on some Aldi um, buns here. These are actually dinner rolls, some canned baked beans just to make it super easy, and then some coleslaw that I had made. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for taking the time to stop by, and have a wonderful week.